Woo. All right. I don't like to wait in silence because this will be a replay. <clears throat> but uh, looking forward to seeing some faces pop in here. See if we could prop up a little bit here at the Underground Strength Gym. And uh, man, been sick for a while. And so uh, just got in a great training session. I was actually here earlier and uh, had to take care of some family stuff. So I had to leave in the middle of the training session. And, uh, but you know what? It was a uh, probably a gift from God. Got to have uh, lunch with my wife and uh, came back, <clears throat> trained, jumped in with some of our athletes. And it was just a reminder to me, hey pops, just a reminder to me about the power of training with people. I train alone all the time, okay, all the time. Um, I miss the days of having my buddy uh, Griffin training with me. We used to have some killer training sessions together. And uh, well, House, this is my second training session, buddy. So <clears throat> I was here earlier, got my whole warm up going. I'm midway through a training session and uh, I had to go and uh, do some family stuff, something that popped up. And so I had to leave and put everything away. And I was like, you know what? I'll train in the garage when I get home. I'll do uh, kettlebell, probably clean and press or snatch, pull-ups, push-ups. I was like, nah, man, I'm going to train with some of these kids. So <laughs> if Big House Power could one day show mercy on me, and he could be like, you know, the not so mean uncle. <laughs> but that's why I love him. This guy always tells me straight I go to house for fatherly strength coach advice. <clears throat> so got to jump in with the athletes and it felt great. And it was a reminder. I love you too, house from the heart, my bro. Uh, by the way, you know what kind of friends you need? Let me tell you the kind of friends you need where if you think about them, you want to be better just from having them in your thoughts. They in, inspire you. Say to yourself, man, I, I, you know, I'm friends with Big House. I'm friends with Quattro Deuce. I'm friends with Tosh. I'm friends with my boy Joe Riggio. These are brothers to me. But when you think about these people in your life, do they make you better? Okay? That's how you know you have great people in your life. Great friends. Right on my phone is a screenshot of my kids. And so I think I just need to look at the screenshot. And I was, uh, you know, trying to talk about training, but here we go talking about life. That's the strong life, right? Uh, some years ago, I was up in Vermont and uh, I was working at Rutgers at the time because I brought uh, Rutgers wrestlers with me to help run the Spartan wrestling camp. Coach Evan Marcus in the house. And at the camp, Joe never has one thing going on, ever. So we have Spartan wrestling camp going on. There was a Spartan race going on at Killington. Then there was the death race going on, which I don't remember how many hours and days the death race is. But <clears throat> Joe brings me out one night. And Joe never really tells the truth in a good way. Joe DeSena of Spartan Race. He says, I want you to come out tonight. We're going to meet the death racers out in the woods on the other side of the mountain. He's like, we need to get some video footage, 20 minutes and we're out. And I said, okay, no problem. 20 minutes. <clears throat> I meet Joe. It's like 830 at night. And I'm thinking we have a five minute drive. The death racers are like 25 minutes away by car. Okay. They've been walking for probably two days through the mountains. We walk, I'm thinking we're entering this mountain area of the woods. No, me and Joe are walking like 45 minutes. And I was like, man, I, I, I thought it would be this quick thing, but I knew not to believe Joe, so I brought a hoodie and I was prepared. And so here's what happened. Let me get to the point. We get out into the middle of the woods on one side of the mountain, we're in Vermont, and there's probably 30 something, about 40 people left. And one of the guys wants to quit. And he's an older guy, he's in his 60s. 
and they're freezing. They had just been uh, submersed in the water. And as much as you think like it's warm in June, you're in Vermont, you're in the mountains. And in the mountain, mountains, things are friggin' cold. <clears throat> and so Joe introduces me and says, this is my friend, Zach. And he introduces me as a motivational speaker. And I say, I'm like, listen up, I don't wanna <clears throat> motivate people, right? That's fleeting, it comes, it goes. So I said, listen, I'm not gonna lie to you guys. I would never do the death race. It's not within me. It's not something I wanna do. I don't have, I have darkness, but not a whole lot. I, I don't have enough of it to wanna do this. Brought in 86, what's up my brother? And so he says, there's somebody in this group who wants to quit. So I tell them, I go, listen, everybody, listen to me. I go on your phone, you don't have your phones out here, but I know on your phone, you have a screensaver of someone. It might be your wife, your husband, grandparents, it could be your kids, it could be your dog. And I go, right now you need to make a decision. I said, you're gonna go home and you're either gonna have a story of triumph or you're going to have a story of how you quit and how you gave up and you need to share this story with the most important person or people in your life. And I said, it might be a dog, but it's somebody you love so much that you, it, you cannot let them down. It'll break your heart forever. So then I said to them, let me explain to you what I think about when I'm about to quit. And I explained to them that my first and middle name, I'm named after my grandfather's two brothers that were killed in the Holocaust. And my grandparents escaped the Holocaust. My grandfather fought in the Polish army. Then he, they escaped and got to Russia. He fought in the Russian army. Then they got to Israel and he was in the Israeli army before it was called the IDF. My grandfather fought in three armies and I'm named after his brothers killed in the Holocaust. And so I said to them, when times get tough, you must think about the people you are going to share your stories with. And uh, that's what keeps me training. I train for life. Many other people train for bigger arms, big chest, whatever it is, I want you to attach it to something deeper meaning than more weight, more muscle. What? Peel away the layers, peel away the surface. What is deeper than the surface, which I say on the surface is strength and conditioning. Food for thought guys, okay? So I had a great finishing of the first workout as Big House explained to me, <laughs> uh, but I was surrounded by great people. A great coach, our guy Tony, great athletes working hard. And when you're around other people working, you can't be the lowest common denominator. You don't want to be, it's embarrassing. And so I found myself really working harder than I have in a long friggin' time. You think you're training hard? Till you're training around other people. And that's why the underground is not a gym. It is a club, an exclusive club of excellence, of people pushing each other, to be great, not just in sports, but great at life. And that's what the Strong Life stands for. Strong Life Podcast. That's what I try to bring to everything we do. You guys can, you know, wherever you have access to me, you'll get that vibe. Gladiator Strong on Train Heroic. The Underground Strength Academy. And then my newsletter. My newsletter is so expensive, it's free. That's it, team. I'm out of here. Go to ZachStrength.com. Thank you guys for watching. Talk to you guys soon.